Hello people, how are you all doing out there in this big wide world of ours? Right, okay, um, story for you here then. Um, right, uh, about um, six or eight weeks ago, as from today's date of course, um, a gentleman named Mike um, contacted me from the London area um, asking me if I could help him on some problems he was having with servicing on some uh, mainly Triang locomotives but one or two other uh, brands as well. Um, okay, I sent him my uh, cell phone number and we eventually got to chat about things and the bottom line is here, he'd been trying to service his own locomotives locomotives uh, using the videos that I've already got on my YouTube channel, the servicing videos for the bogies and the XO4 motor etc. Um, but he wasn't particularly a dab hand at this and things weren't working out for him and that can happen even though the videos are I think are pretty well explained sometimes you just could have the knack to do something and sometimes it doesn't quite happen that way. Now this being the case, um, we arranged to, uh, to meet, he was going to come up from London to, uh, to meet me and bring some of the locomotives that he wanted to sort in, um, and we did that, and he actually, he actually brought about 20 locomotives, which was more than I thought, but not a problem of course, we agreed on uh, a realistic price for servicing them, and of course uh, I would have to charge a bit extra if it required adding certain parts that were sort of quite expensive, as some of the older stuff is, uh, but we agreed on all that, and uh, the day he was here, I got through six of them and we checked them all out on the layout and it was all fantastic, uh, it was brilliant and uh, by the time he had to catch the train back to London we had to say we managed six and um, he left the rest of them here for me to deal with uh, in my own good time. Now a few days ago I uh, decided to make a start on them um, and I got through I believe over the last two or three days I got through about seven or eight. Uh, one of them was quite a bit of a headache and he did quite a lot doing but uh, you know that's the way it goes. Um, and uh, another one that I did that was quite interesting because uh, it was one of these. Uh, the Triang Switcher. Um, the one in question was actually the uh, Canadian Pacific one, which is like a kind of uh, orangey black or light red and black, whatever. But they're all the same. They're all basically the same. Now, um, when I opened it up, the motor was not even wired. There was no wiring on the motor whatsoever, which of course wasn't a problem. I can do that. Not a problem at all. Um, but the other thing was that the lights were all missing, the front and back lights were not there um, and they, they have special holders, plastic assemblies what hold the lights um, and they weren't there at all so that meant I had to look in my stocks if I got any and as it happened I had run out, I think I gave my friend Sam the last two um, to try and make a switch up from spares, some spares that I got uh, so there was another option, uh, well there was two options either don't put any lights in it or change it for LEDs and that's what I've done now when I did his, it was the first one I'd actually ever done. I've done a few of my Triang locomotives with the single headlamp on the front, but I've never done any of the twin lights where they're on front and back, which obviously is the switches, and so is the double-ended diesels, the double-ended electrics. Now, um, I'd always planned to do them all and change them to LEDs, because they are far superior. Um, but it was a bit of a daunting task because I've got that many if it was only one or two locomotives that would be simple to do but I've got at least 10 switches all different ones and of course it's going to take a long time to do them although as I say I always intended to do it at some point in time but having now got this one belonging to Mike this Canadian one um, and as I said I decided to put the uh, LEDs in for him after negotiating with him if he wants me to do that and it turned out such a fantastic job I thought while I'm in the mood while I'm in the frame of mind I'll do one of mine and I'll show you how I did it because the results are absolutely fantastic so here we go now of course like all my servicing videos I'm going to go through everything with you in pretty fine detail to try and make it as easy as I can for you but um, what I'm not going to do I'm, I, I think it might be better if I don't actually show you me soldering certain things together uh, it might be better to just do it and then show you and explain why I've done it um, that otherwise the video kind of gets a bit too long really uh, and I know some of my videos are pretty long so anyway right I've taken the cover off dead simple two screws take the cover off now you can see on here at the uh, back end we've got an assembly here this is the plastic assembly which has got the lamp in it and of course I've already done these all properly and redone them from um, servicing them and improving them basically from earlier on um, but that's the plastic assembly at the front there and you can see here above the bogey is this assembly here is the uh, front one for the other lamp now what we're going to do we're going to take these off and I'll do that and then I'll show you what it looks like without them on there you go then everybody, that's the uh, front assembly 
plastic assembly there look with the bulb still in place I've just simply unsoldered the wires from the other end this one here is the back assembly as you can see the bulb is still on it so that's um, yeah that's the uh, the back one and what I've done um, I've taken that off obviously but I've kept the screw and the bracket look as you can hopefully see there look yeah, I've kept those I've screwed that back down because it's not uh, not bothering anybody and just in case we ever wanted to put it back to original for any reason I have just left that in there here now is the bogey which has been uh, serviced and uh, improved immensely a long time ago and you'll see here we've got these two wires here which are what normally plug into the front assembly for the light uh, sorry the rear assembly for the light and then there's wires across to the front assembly well we are going to remove these two wires and I'm just going to put them away and keep them somewhere safe because we don't need them for this particular uh, way of doing it with the LEDs so uh, I'll be back in a tick here then the wires are now removed which was here which is the ground and there which is the positive now when we do actually connect the new LEDs up eventually last thing that's where the same two wires will go that were there originally with the little plugs on for the uh, rear light etc so that's the place where we're going to resolder but we'll come back to that in a little while now because first of all I'm going to show you some of the things that you need to do this job okay things that you'll need first of all obviously solder and a soldering iron goes without saying right next up we need the two LEDs now I normally use the three millimeter ones which you can see here now the, I use warm white as well it seems to be a very good color for model railway stuff so uh, we've got two of those and you will need the ballast resistor here which I can tell you I'm using uh, LEDs which are 20 to 30 milliamps so a 470 to 560 ohm resistor at 0.6 watt is absolutely fine to do that we will need the rectifier here which I have explained to you before in a previous video showing how to convert a, a coach from a uh, an, an ordinary box standard lamp to an LED with including the anti-flicker circuit uh, what I'll do I'll put the description of that one or the link to it sorry in the description box below because that will give you more information about the actual components that you need to buy should you want to do this we need this as well which again is on that other video um, it's a thousand microfarad at 16 volts this is what stops the anti-flicker now also what you will need is possibly double-sided tape like that and also when I can find it yeah here we go some uh, cable wire now I use uh, really this is really good this is this is actually ribbon cable and you could just pull off as much as you want in X amount of layers now because we're going to put the LEDs in what's called series which goes through one whoops magnetic as well through one and then through the other by doing it that way we have a lesser current required and we also only need two cables as well so I'll show you how to do all that starting in a few seconds now I've just wired these up uh, tentatively just to show you how it's actually going to work um, and as it happens um, even if you buy a bag of 50 all the same supposedly all the same actually they're not they're not always exactly the same and I'll show you what I mean hopefully you're going to see this on the camera I've just I blob these together to give you an idea and if you look at the one I don't know, I really don't know if the camera's going to see this but this one here is actually more yellowy than that one maybe you can't see it maybe you can I'm really not sure if you could actually be able to pick that out but what I normally do I normally try two or three different LEDs until I find two that are pretty much the same shade I've now swapped one of the LEDs uh, for a different one from the bag and uh, again hopefully if you can see it these are both the same now they are both kind of more yellowy uh, I mean it's not a massive difference don't get me wrong you wouldn't even notice it at each end of the locomotive but just for the sake of being uh, accurate and uh, you know a bit fussy these two now have got the same kind of uh, shade to them so right we'll uh, switch this off and uh, um, we'll move on now before we move on I've just spotted something um, I've kind of shot myself in the foot a little bit by choosing this one as to be the the first one of my own to do uh, and I'll show you why although it is fixable trust me it is fixable right and um, if you look at the typical trying loco like this one you see that there is the rivet in there now almost all the trying locomotives or whatever's uh, with lighting have that rivet and as you'll see here on the uh, three millimeter LED it fits in there perfectly look the shoulder on the LED won't go through and it's absolutely a spot-on fit uh, now uh, yeah that's 
what I'd planned to do, obviously. But then I suddenly realised, or sorry, I should say I suddenly remembered, that the, um, the mid to late 50s ones, of which this one is, as you can see here, there's no rivet in it. And this applied to the maroon one, this one, the green one, and the very first yellow one without hazard stripes. None of them had those rivets in there. Um, and I, I picked this one up and forgot all about that. And that simply means that the LED is going to go right through look the shoulder's not going to stop there so we've got a tiny problem with that but not to worry i've got over that right and this is what i've done this is a 2.5 millimeter washer which fits perfectly over the led now you should be able to see here that i've put that 2.5 millimeter washer over the led and obviously it sits up snug against the uh, shoulder of the led which basically gives us a bigger shoulder which stops it coming through the loco but the one thing that that doesn't do it doesn't actually centralize it for us okay we could sort of glue it and mess around making sure we've got it in the middle but uh, what i did to make it even easier is i got a piece of this look this is silicon sleeving okay it's a clear one it doesn't have to be silicone uh, and it doesn't have to be clear but i chose to use the silicone because uh, it expands quite well and what i've done i've pushed a piece of that on and then trimmed it off all the way round the top and that now will give us a perfect fit i hope in the center like perfect like that look spot on so we will now move on and uh, we'll carry on with the story there we go Okay, we'll move on with the project, um, which will apply in either case whether your locomotive has got a rivet in or it hasn't. Obviously, you've just seen the bit I've done to make those without the rivet fit. So, right, let's get back onto it. Right. Um, I'll just tell you very briefly a little bit of uh, explanation about LEDs, if this is kind of new to you. Uh, really, it's all on the internet. You've only got to Google it because it's all out there. All the information is there, but just basic, simple stuff, right? The LED look, you can clearly see that one leg this one is longer than the other one. Now, the longer one is called the anode, the shorter one is called the cathode. The anode is your positive, in other words, that's the plus, which obviously means the cathode, the shorter one, is the negative. So you need to know that first off. Now, what I'm going to do, it's quite simple now to solder some wires onto the LED, um, obviously which we need to do. Uh, I, I prefer to cut the legs off short and solder the wires much closer to the head of the LED rather than leave these long wires on. That's entirely up to you. But if you do cut them off, which I'll show you in a minute, and solder wires on, the one thing you must do is make sure that you note which is the positive, the anode. Colour of the wire doesn't matter as long as you make a note of what colour you've used for that leg. OK, I'll do that and come back. Now here you can see that I've soldered my uh, twin piece of ribbon cable uh, onto the LED a bit closer up and I've cut the legs off like I said. Um, again, I've made a point of noting which one was the positive leg, the long one, which is this one. And quite simply, like I said, the colours don't matter, but what I always tend to do is whatever the colours are, whichever is the brightest one, which in this case will be the purple, I've soldered that to the positive, the long leg of the LED. Right, next bit. Now with a tiny spot of super glue, we're, we're actually fixed into the hole of the locomotive perfectly as you can see there. And if the camera will allow me to show you, there it is, perfect in the middle, though it's a bit out of focus, but it is there. So back off a bit, look. Yep, there it is, look, knob on. Right, next bit, coming up. Oh, and I'm sorry, one thing I did forget to mention earlier, something else that you need is this. This is black tack. Uh, you can actually use blue tack, of course, but uh, black tack, which was introduced to me by uh, another YouTube member, I, I didn't know about it. Well, I sort of did, but never thought about it. Uh, and it's brilliant. It's a bit more sticky than blue tack. And ironically enough, a lot of loco manufacturers actually do use black tack um, to hold lots of wires down today, especially with decoders and lots of wires everywhere. So it's a, a good thing to keep in stock. Um, anyway, so what I've done, now you'll see, hopefully you'll see, there, I've actually took the wires down here and into the black and put some black tack on the top um, by the way I forgot to mention to you on the switcher here we started at the 
motor end descent here which is the, the back end there we started with the motor end I'll come back to that as to why in a bit but uh, uh, obviously with all these trying locomotives as I do them I, I go through each one there will be differences in the way we approach it like the dock shunter will be different it's only got a single light at the front the double-ended diesel the double-ended double electrics they will be different because they've got a light at each end but they're going to be slightly different to the way we work on them and the single-ended diesel have also got a single light at the front which will again be needed to be treated in a different fashion but as I do my locomotives over time I will explain each one to you exactly how I've done it so you'll see now that I put the wire uh, the ribbon cable here in the middle there I'm going to blue tack uh, sorry black tack again down here in a minute and I'll come back and show you that one and I'll tell you about the holes for the mounting screws just here in a couple of seconds so uh, I'm back in a bit now here you can see that I took the ribbon cable down really nice and tidy here keeping it in the center and again we've got more blue tack holding it to the cab roof there so that's good and you'll see I brought it straight through the middle there between the two mounting holes which hold the body to the uh, to the chassis now I can tell you that the chassis does sit flush onto the body there so in you might think to yourself, well that's not a good idea you're going to chop the wires but I can I think you can probably see there's actually a flange there you can see the screwdriver is stopping against it and of course same on the other side which means that the chassis hits that flange it doesn't hit the actual top of the plastic assembly which means if you use good thin ribbon cable like this it will actually sit between and it will not get trapped by the chassis which is perfect it's exactly what we want and again the reason I use ribbon cable is because it keeps the two together and really quite tidy um, right and you can see I've got some more black tack there holding it to the center and another piece there holding it to the center and we're now up to the front of the locomotive and we'll come back and show you how to do that bit in a second next up then I've separated the ribbon cables from the uh, loose end uh, that was, uh, we're going to end up with and you can see here I've separated the grey which we know is the negative or the short leg of the front LED uh, sorry the rear LED and uh, then I've put it at a particular point leaving a little bit of free to work with on the front LED and I've stripped them back and soldered them both or tinned them both ready now the point is we know that this grey one is our negative now when you connect anything in series which is DC it's always negative to positive which means that this grey leg here although it's off the negative of the rear LED it must go to the positive of the front LED which then we soldered the negative to this one which continues on as our negative for both LEDs and of course we know the purple one is our positive for them both so we'll do that right now okay the front LED is now soldered into place and just to recap again this wire here this gray one at the back here is coming from the rear LED and that we know is our negative of the rear one but it's soldered to the positive the long leg on this one and then the remainder of the cable which I cut off is now soldered to the negative of this one here at the front which means that's our negative for both LEDs and like I said this colored purple one which we haven't chopped is the positive to the back LED which means it's the positive now for both of them so next job is to uh, glue this in, in place obviously I've left a bit of a loop to allow me to work with the front LED for gluing it into place and it isn't a problem because on these switches there's tons and tons of room inside here there's loads of open room inside the chassis so you need to leave a bit of a loop so you can actually put a bit of glue on and work and get it into place which we'll do now here we go then LED glued into place with a tiny spot of super glue you can see what I mean about the loop that I've left there so we've got plenty of spare wire and then here I've doubled the pair of wires back which are going to go to our anti-flicker power supply and that uh, there they are the pair of them ready to connect to that which I'll show you how to make in a few seconds onto the anti-flickering power supply and as previously I showed you in a video explaining how to do this um, you can see here I've just soldered a couple of wires onto the AC input of the rectifier now, the AC input is marked with a couple of little squiggles now the colour of the wire you choose doesn't matter and it also doesn't matter which way round you connect them because the rectifier is always going to keep the correct polarity for your LEDs in any kind of project like this 
and these will be connected to the locomotive motor assembly where the wires were that we took off for the bulbs originally in question. Next, here you can see on the output of the bridge rectifier, I've soldered the 1000 microfarad capacitor. Now you can use more than a 1000 microfarad, but you must keep the voltage at 16 or above. Um, and of course it's very important of course that you connect the polarity the correct way around. So this being the negative here of the capacitor is on the negative of the bridge rectifier. So we're now nearly ready to actually put this into the chassis of the R155 or the diesel trying diesel switcher locomotive. Let's do this. Here you can now see the rectifier which is glued down with the double sided tape. You could actually use super glue or whatever really as long as you be careful that these uh, connections don't touch the metal casement. Uh, but yeah she's glued down there with double sided tape and the capacitor is there as well connected the right way around. And I've laid the wires carefully along the chassis. There's, like I said there's loads of room in here on the diesel switches that is um, and I brought them through the hole which was the original hole used for the wires to transfer from the front to light, uh, front to back light anyway and um, of course the wires are left loose now for us to really connect to the locomotive motor but um, the, here you can see I have put some uh, more of the black tack on again to hold them nice and secure which is a good idea no matter what here you can now quite clearly see I've added the ballast resistor in which we need to supply the LEDs. Um, it really doesn't matter whether you connect it to the positive or the negative side of the output of the rectifier. I've just chosen to put it on the on the left hand side here which is the, uh, the negative and I've stuck it down into the uh, double sided tape and I've tinned that wire ready to drop the wires on um, ready for the, uh, for the LEDs so we'll do that right now. Here then you can see now I brought the uh, purple one which we know is the positive feed for our two LEDs to the positive of the rectifier and the capacitor there nice and simple and because we chose to use the uh, negative for putting the resistor in which wouldn't have mattered um, we've now got the negative here this grey one of our two LEDs there and so that's it that's complete all we need to do now is try it okay the moment of truth front oh, 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 oh yeah look at that check the back oh yes perfect knob on reverse the connection turn the controller reversed it stays on look forwards backwards forwards backwards forwards backwards perfect anti-flicker now she's turned off now look so you'll see it's got a fade out look but watch on forwards on backwards in other words whichever way we send the locomotive the light is on perfect so all that's left to be done now is to solder the two feed wires to our anti-flicker circuit back where the original wiring for the 12 volt bulbs came from which is that point and that point there and it's a good idea to leave a little bit of extra wire on there because once this is bolted into place just there hopefully you can see that just bolter into place there we can pull some of the surplus wire back let me just move across a bit for you we can pull some of the surplus wire back from here look into the open space like that look to take up the slack uh, because of course it has to swivel from side to side like that so it's always a good idea to leave a bit of extra wire on and pull back what's not required when you're ready to do so there we go so uh, one more screw to put in and then hopefully the locomotive motor should run and the lights as well so hang on so here we have it the moment of truth all screwed back together nice and secure well the motor's running is what are the lights on Oh, look at that. Spot on. Hopefully the crocodile tips won't come off. Check the front. Oh, look at that. Spot on. Reverse. No flicker. Super duper perfect. Knob on. That's how you do it to a triang switcher. Now, I will just point something out to you here. This particular locomotive... <laughs> is worth in the region of around 250 pounds or more because of its rarity so it's very important that there's two things you adhere to if you do do this conversion on any of your uh, certainly rare locomotives one is remember to keep hold 
of the original lighting brackets so you can put it back to original should you ever wish to do so the other thing is when you're working with the soldier nine over a valuable locomotive like this be very careful of solder dropping onto it because it will do obviously instant damage be very aware of what you're doing a touch wood to this day I've never actually had that happen so uh, it's just a, it's just a point worth, worth mentioning to you at this point so there you go how to fit beautiful LEDs to the triangle switches see you guys bye